New York City, a great day to come to the ballpark, bring the kids and enjoy what should be a really outstanding game. And today, the Yes Network presents New York Yankees baseball. It's the New York Yankees against the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim and the third of four between these two teams at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Yankees baseball, along with Jim Cott. I'm Michael Kay. Well, these two teams have split the first two games. The Angels won the first game. Yankees won yesterday 5-2, and right in the middle of it again for the Yankees, Robinson Cano. He's been unbelievable since he came off the DL. You'd think when a player came off the DL, he'd sort of hide in the lineup, and you'd give him a little time to get started, but Robbie Cano has come back as if he never even left, not only at the plate, but in the field. Check, this is a very Derek Jeter-like over-the-shoulder catch, and then another one right here. Great backhand flip to Jeter, and that's the game ender. So he's played great in the field, and at the bat, he's been unbelievable. This is in Chicago. That's straightaway center field. That's a home run. And then here at the stadium, a bad pitch from Calvin Escobar, and that ends up in the seat. So he has done it on both sides of the ball. Hardly missed a beat. Nine for 19 since coming out the DL. That's 474, four doubles, two home runs. So six extra base hits and nine at bats, four RBIs. Not too bad for Robinson Cano. Let's take a look now at today's pitching matchup brought to you by your local Infinity retailers. Well, we're going to get a look at a couple of young right handers. Jared Weaver, some successful start to his major league career, 7 and 0. And of course, Chin Ming Wong at 13 and 4. Both of them very good at keeping the ball in the ballpark, particularly Chin Ming Wong. But there's a lot of good things to say about him the most economical handles his position so well and he's having some kind of year pretty nice pitching matchup on paper we'll see how it plays out on grass Jin Ming Wong an important start for him they all are now why because it's so tight in the American League East we take a close look at the pennant race when we get back next on yes it's really, really a beautiful day here in New York City and a great day for baseball. Chin Ming Wong is taking his warm-ups and he's going to face the Angels. And their starting lineup is presented, as always, by our great friends at Rico. Sean Figgins in center field leads off. Howie Kendrick at first will bat second. The number three hitter, the shortstop, Orlando Cabrera. The dangerous Vladimir Guerrero will DH. He'll clean up. Batting fifth and playing right field, Juan Rivera since July 1st. Juan's hitting 347, 14 homers, 37 ribbies. Adam Kennedy at second, Rob Quinlan at third. Curtis Bright's out in left field. And batting ninth and catching is Mike Napoli. Chin Ming Wong takes the mound for the Yankees. 20 sixth game one of those been in relief actually has a save more than a hit per inning the important number only nine home runs does a good job of keeping the ball in the ballpark let's take a look at the Land Rovers pitcher scouting report Bruce Suter my friend and former teammate just went to the Hall of Fame he existed on one pitch a splitter that just kept going down and down well Chin Ming Wong has that same type of uh, pitch that same type of effect with his sinker except he throws in the mid 90s and no matter how many hits he gives up it always seems he's just one pitch away from getting out of a jam with that double play and of the nine home runs he's never given up more than one per start he's the best in the league at keeping the ball in the ballpark he's done with his warm-ups Sean Figgins is digging in Wong always pitches well in the first inning he's allowed only one run in the first inning over his last 18 starts his first inning ERA 1.13 only Roy Halladay is better and Halladay's first inning ERA is zero. So Wong the young right hander deals to Figgins and we're underway the pitch is high. Yankees baseball is presented in high definition we're available it's brought to you by Sony Bravia. Driven deep to right field, going back Abreu on the track in front of the wall. See ya! A solo home run for Sean Figgins to start it off, and the Angels lead 1-0. One thing about baseball numbers, they might tell you what happened in the past, but not today. Boy, does this go against Ford. Michael mentioned Chin Ming Wong's success in the first inning and keeping it in the ballpark. And Sean Figgins, not really known as a power guy, starts the Angels off with a home run. Here's Howie Kendrick, pitches low. 
Coming into the game, he's allowed one home run every 17.9 innings pitched, and that's the lowest amongst Major League qualifiers this season. And just like that, the first inning in the home run stat goes in the trash bin. Knocked down by A-Rod, and we'll see how they score that as Kendrick reaches. That's a play that Alex should make. Why, when you're having trouble in the field, you never get an easy hop. I mean, this is a playable ball, certainly, but right there, he's going to try to play it on the side. I think it takes an extra little kick. Watch how he reaches back toward the outfield. And uh, it was generously scored a base hit. Again, I think it's a play. If you asked A-Rod, he'd say he should have made He was going to try to play it to the side and then make a, a 360 and throw to first base. Official scorer David Freeman gives Kendrick a base hit. Here's Orlando Cabrera. Pitch outside, 1-0. and <laughs> Chin Ming Wong averages 13.9 pitches per inning, which is the third lowest in Major League Baseball. B baseball Roy Halladay and Greg Maddox average 13.7 pitches per inning. Runner goes. Hit and run was on. The ball fouled back. Yankees baseball is broadcast in Spanish. It's available by hitting the SAP button on your television. And SAP is brought to you by Toyota. A smart way to keep moving forward. I think you'll see a lot of that if the Angels get a base runner. Mike Sosha realizes what a good ground ball pitcher Chen Ming Wang is. And uh, they run a lot anyway. But they're going to do that to, to try to stay out of the double play. Advance a runner. Runner goes again, and through the vacated hole on the right side, a perfect hit and run. Kendrick will go to third. Orlando Cabrera reaches at first, and the Angels have runners on the corners and nobody out. Boy, that is textbook. What a great job by Orlando Cabrera. Look where that pitch is. I mean, to be able to get on top of that pitch and hit it, and that's the kind of pitch that you would expect a hitter to be jammed and pop up. And he gets on top of it and with Cano covering, hits it in the perfect spot. And again, it's uh, Angels type baseball. You see Howie Kendrick makes sure he jumps over the ball. He'll get to third easily. Here's Vlad Guerrero with runners on the corners and nobody out. 313 overall, hitting 358 since July 1st. Chasing back Cabrera. So Wong encountering some first inning difficulties, rare for him. Pitches inside. As a pitching coach, uh, Ron Gidry sitting there, and, and you know that Chin Ming Wong's pretty readable. Mention he he, uh, he depends on the hard sinker. So I'm sure Gator is sitting there right now saying, now, why isn't he getting the ball consistently down? Is he striding too far? Uh, there's not a lot of difficult things to look like to look at with Wong in terms of what's going wrong. Dribbled slowly in front of the plate. Wong will make the play at home. And the tag is made by Posada and Kendrick's out. Wong really feels his position well. Well, he's made one error in his career, and that's a throwing error. And I'll tell you, this is a good play by Posada, too. Chin Ming Wong off the mound, tries, gets it out of his glove, and now with a runner bearing down on him, Posada has to, you see, almost lost it. In fact, I think the Yankees might have got by with it. He trapped it with his mask because he's got to look at the ball, get down, guard the plate. <laughs> and he uses the mask for his right hand. <laughs> Yeah, 
and quickly conceals it from the umpire. So it's a nice play on both ends. So now first and second, and we talked about the double play. He's one pitch away from getting out of it. Here's Juan Rivera. And the pitch outside, 1-0. Yeah, I think even in situations like this, you see what Rivera's done. And uh, Michael mentioned Friday night, he's really started hitting the long ball for the Angels. But uh, they'll even hit and run in situations like this. Rivera with 14 homers in his last 35 games, 20 overall. The 1 0. Punch through the right side for a base hit. Orlando Cabrera rounds third. They're going to wave him home. Here's the throw from Abreu. He's in there. So Cabrera scores on the RBI single by Juan Rivera, and the Angels lead 2 0. Oh, one of the roughest first innings we've ever seen Chin Ming Wong have, and another good job by an Angel right hand hitter. You saw Cano in your picture playing him a little bit to pull. And obviously with Mickey Hatcher their hitting coach they've said don't try to pull this guy take him the other way and uh, Cabrera did it remarkable job on getting on top of the pitch with a hit and run now Rivera who's known more for hitting uh, home runs takes it the opposite way. Here's Adam Kennedy. Pitch outside, 1 0. Cabrera hustled and took a chance against the strong arm of Bobby Abreu and got in fairly easily. The 1 0. Upstairs, 2 0. Not in the groove right now. There's the first inning earned run average, as you mentioned, and uh, two runs already for the Angels, but more pitches above the belt than you're accustomed to seeing from Chen Meng Wong. The 2-0. Two, 2-1. Two and one. We told you earlier that Chin Ming Wong averages 13.9 pitches per inning. He's at 14 already. So it's about time for him to throw a double play to keep that pitches per inning average right around where it should be. Foul back. The umpires today, Marvin Hudson is behind the plate. The veteran crew chief, Jerry Lane at first, Bob Davidson at second, and Mark Wegner is over at third. Two nothing Angels just underway here on a Sunday afternoon at Yankee Stadium, the 2 2. Foul back. Beautiful day at the stadium. Let's take a look at the game time weather conditions presented by Heineken. And you can't ask for better than this. 76 degrees, low humidity, no wind, not many clouds, and the forecast is for the ever popular sunny. The 2 2. Grounded up the middle and past the diving Jeter and into center field. Guerrero will score. Damon flips the ball into Cano. It's an RBI single for Kennedy, and the Angels lead 3 0. Well, a ground ball, but not at a Yankee infielder. Pitch down and away. Chin Ming Wong can't be disappointed with that, but the ball hit fairly hard and just out of the reach of Derek Jeter. With a ground ball pitcher, there has to be a little bit of luck, other than the Figgins home run, which is hard to explain when it comes to Wong. The rest have been ground balls, but they found the hole. 
And one time the Angels actually created a hole with a hit and run. Here's Rob Quinlan. Seven game hitting streak for Quinlan during which time he's 11 for 26. So three runs on five hits still first and second one out. And the pitch is low and away one and oh. Uh, what you're looking at here in the first inning is right even though the Angels aren't in first place. If they were to get in postseason play they they are such a tough team to play against. I mean rarely do they hit home runs like you see Figgins just do they don't do it that that much but uh, they can put the ball in play and create things. Got a great bullpen. Well of the four times during the 90s or during the Joe Torre era should I say that the Yankees didn't make the World Series two of the times they were knocked out by the Angels. 2002 and last year. And Mike Sosha is one of only three managers with a winning record against Joe Torre as Yankee manager. Sosha is 29 and 28 in the regular season. Terry Francona 31 and 29. Kevin Kennedy 7 and 6. Runners go and a slow roller third base out of the mound. And Chin Ming Wong can't get a handle and Quinlan is safe. If that's an error it would be his first in 75 chances. We'll see if they score that an error or a hit. And Ron Guidry out to the mound. Now you see Chin Meng Wong break off the mound. Alex was going toward the bag and he tried to barehand it. And it is called the base. I was going to say it's if it's consistent with the call on the ball hit to Alex Rodriguez it would be a base hit. I think both the, both of them were very catchable. It's always a little bit more dangerous when you go at it with your bare hand. He probably felt he didn't have chance to, to try to glove it and get control of it. And also the Angels starting the running or starting the runners that forced Alex Rodriguez to retreat to third in case the ball wasn't hit. Chen Ming Wong had to make the play although it was probably his anyway. Juan Rivera is at third. Adam Kennedy is at second. And Rob Quinlan over at first. Here's Curtis Pride. Three nothing Angels. Six hits already in the first inning against Chin Ming Wong. An inauspicious beginning. Count one and zero. Oh. They certainly don't want to see Wong leave the game early they had to uh, eat up a lot of innings out of the bullpen on Friday and yesterday three and I believe a third out of the bullpen the 1 0 2 and 0 and Mike Napoli the number nine batter in the lineup is on deck. Want to keep it right here. They're facing a tough pitcher in Jared Weaver. One pitch away from forcing in a run. Give you an idea how rare this is. Already you see the 23 pitch total as Michael said that's rare because he's among the most economical. This year he's given up one run in the first inning three different times but never more than one. So that gives you an idea how against form this is for Chen Ming Wong. Three zero, right down the middle. Three and one. Twenty four pitches, thirteen strikes, eleven balls. And the three one. This could be two. Cano to Jeter one. Under first, a double play. So Chin Ming Wong escapes further damage, but there was damage. Three runs on six hits, and it started with that leadoff home run by Sean Figgins. Two runners left. Angels three. Yankees coming to bat. Well, Jared Weaver has a 3 0 lead before throwing a pitch, so a good feeling for him. Let's take a look at the Yankee starting lineup that he's going to face, presented by our good friends at Rico. The center fielder is Johnny Damon. He leads off. The captain, the shortstop, Derek Jeter, bats second. Batting third, playing right field, Bobby Abreu. 
Alex Rodriguez, who's had a strong last five games offensively, nine for 18, two homers and four ribbies. He's at third, cleaning up. Batting fifth in DH in Jason Giambi. Jorge Posada will catch, he'll bat sixth. The number seven hitter, second baseman, Robinson Cano, nine for 19 since coming up the DL. Craig Wilson at first will bat eighth, and Melky Cabrera's on left field. He'll bat ninth. And taking the mound with a three-run lead is Jared Weaver. And uh, in 10 starts, a perfect 7-0. and Yes, he is the brother of uh, ex-Yankee Jeff Weaver. Less than a hit per inning and excellent control. He's only given up three home runs. Let's check out the Land Rover pitcher scouting report on Jared Weaver. He works fast and throws strikes. And I'm sure Don Mattingly has told the Yankee hitters this. He likes to start you out with a fastball down and away. And this will be by far his biggest test. The Yankees will throw six quality left-hand hitters, a couple switch hitters in there. So this will be his uh, toughest test. Though up to this point, he's handled both lefties and righties quite well. Overall numbers are outstanding, as Jim just detailed. But in his last three starts, a 4.91 ERA without a decision. His first seven starts, his ERA was 1.15. To make sure he's loose, a little calisthenics. His motion is a lot like Brother Jeff. Slingshot, steps over toward third base, throws across his body. Johnny Damon will dig in. What an awfully tough thing it was for Jared Weaver. The second time he was called up, here to the Angels, the time that he was called up to stay. In order to make room, the Angels designated his brother Jeff for assignment. I mean, that's that's going to be awful around Thanksgiving. Brotherly love. Jeff's now at the Cardinals, the 1-1. One -one. A little low, 2-1. and one. He said, business is business, and we both realize that. It's obviously a little bittersweet. You're glad you're back up in the major leagues, but replacing your brother is a little odd. We got through it, though. And there's a spot. Well, the good news is uh, they're both in the big leagues. Be one thing if you replaced your brother in Class A ball, he got released. Right. <laughs> but, but they're both in the big leagues doing well. Popped up behind the plate and out of play. Swing and a miss, and Damon down on strikes. Well, it's, it's more than just velocity. When you look at this motion, here comes the glove, three quarter, late movement, six foot seven. I mean, there are some guys that can throw 93, but they're true and readable, and you can see the ball. But uh, you can tell by that swing, Johnny Damon had a tough time picking that pitch up. Here's Derek Jeter. He's one for nine so far in this series. Foul back. Mentioned the similarity to brother Jeff and check out the motion. Nice big hip turn hides the ball and then when you see him plant his foot he's actually stepping almost toward the angel dugout and then slings it across his body. Now there's a purpose to that pitch. I was talking to a couple of the Angel people. They say that Jared's dad grew up a huge Don Drysdale fan and tried to tell both of his sons, you don't have to hit people, but don't be afraid to throw the ball inside. Boy, and isn't that so true? I was talking with Mike Sosha about that before the game, uh, complimenting him on his young left-hander, Joe Saunders, on Friday night. He's not afraid to run the ball up and in like you said not to hit people but to make them move their feet and you just don't see pitchers do it that often breaking ball strike and there's the effect of it I mean if if you've never gone inside you're not going to see Derek Jeter take quite as tentative look at that breaking ball as he did there two two Again goes outside and the count full. Here's the pitch 
up and in. Yeah, this is classic Drysdale. Spin you around in the revolving door and then, oops, stick a breaking ball right on the outside corner. And Jeter walks. Take a look at the Angels defensively behind Weaver in the outfield Pride, Diggins, and Rivera. That's left to right in the infield Quinlan, Cabrera, Kennedy, and Kendrick. Napoli behind the plate on the mound is Weaver. Not a good defense, 91 errors, most in the American League, which has allowed 71 unearned runs. You know, we should explain for some of our younger viewers Don Drysdale, a big, tough, right hander who pitched for the Dodgers who was known to throw inside every now and then. Well uh, he's got a motion similar to Drysdale. Big D slung the ball like that and he had that movement he'd run it up and in on right hand hitters. But from what I've heard Jim Don Drysdale would hit you. Uh, well in those days uh, I think in general he probably started it. It was the two for one rule. In other words if your pitcher hit one of the Dodgers he was going to get the pitcher plus a player but uh, and that's not to you know say it was a macho game and you try to hurt people but that's just the way pitchers went at it to try to protect their hitters to keep them from getting thrown in. There's a Brayu with a 10 game hitting streak. And he's got one of those vitamin hitting streaks going. One a, One a day, day. Yeah. 10 for 24 during the hitting streak. Check that he's 10 for his last 24 17 for 42 during the streak. Joe D took a whole bottle of those. Yes, multiple vitamins. Right now Manny Ramirez is on one of those vitamin streets. I think he has 28 in a row. Check that 27 and the 27 was a game winner yesterday in extra innings. Count two and two. Asked Buddy Black, their pitching coach, how he did handle left hand hitters. And uh, so far, when you look at the stats, he's done very well. They're only, uh, only hitting a little over 200 against him. There's Bud. And he's got the four seam fastball, two seam, the sinker, and then you just saw the break ball. He's got enough weapons. Just missed. We even wanted that one. Let's see why he wanted it. Can't say that I blame him, except the late movement might have taken it just off the plate. Ooh. Gonna be a hitter zone today if those are all balls. Runner goes, 3 2, swung and a miss, throw to second is. Not in time, stolen base for Jeter. Well, 3 2 slider. And Weaver gets the out. Derek looking in, see if Abreu makes contact and gets into second easily. Ooh, tough pitch. You know, one thing about Jeter, that's his 26 stolen base. And a lot of people have a lot of stolen bases, but you'll see they might have 26 stolen bases. They're caught 12 times. Jeter's only been caught three times. So 26 out of 29 is outstanding. Here's A Rod, runner in scoring position. And a nice block there by Napoli. <laughs> 24 home runs for A-Rod this year. 51 home runs. Lifetime against the Angels. The most of any player ever against the Anaheim, California, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Two and zero. Palmero with 49. He's retired. Killebrew's retired. Reggie's retired. Ripkin's retired. So A Rod could build on the lead.
And the count 3 and 0. Giambi's on deck. Both pitchers struggling here in the first inning for guys that uh, have had excellent control and kept their pitch count down. Taking all the way, takes a strike. Breaking ball, swung on a miss. Good pitch. Uh, basics of pitching high and tight low and away and can you get your breaking pitches over when you're behind in the count he struck a Brayu out on an excellent breaking pitch and there in a hitter's count throws one to a rod in a good spot. Struck him out. And he strikes out the side. So an impressive first inning for Jared Weaver. No runs, no hits, no errors. One walk and one man left as A-Rod goes down on strikes to end the inning. We go to the second. It's 3-0 Angels. As we go to the second inning. And Mike Napoli, the only batter that did not bat against Wong in the first, leads off the second. And there's a strike. And would you believe the number nine hitter in the lineup that is the first first pitch strike that Chin Ming Wong has thrown that's uh, how tough a first inning he had. Count on two Napoli one for eight in this series he's four for his last forty five. He's now four for his last 46. All three strikes. Uh, this looked like either a splitter. Yeah, I think it was. Anytime you see a pitch break down and in from a right hand pitcher to right hand hitter, it's either like a, a heavy sinker or a screwball. That was like in the mid 80s, so you'd, you'd figure that was a split finger fastball. Back to the top of the lineup and Sean Figgins solo home run let off the game this time he tries to bunt pulls it back and takes a strike. Today's close captioning presented by your New York New Jersey and Connecticut Lexus dealers. Biggins all purpose for the Angels. He's played all three outfield positions. He's played third, short, and second. Obviously, he could play first if need be, a little bit on the short side. And I'm sure he could catch if Sosha asked him. He's a perfect guy to have on the team. Started the season as the third baseman moved to center with the injury to Darren Erstad. Ground ball to first. Craig Wilson, two away. And that's how versatile he is. He does a good job at all the positions. It's not as if he's just grabbing a glove and going out there. Here's Howie Kendrick, an infield single off the glove of A Rod in the first inning. And a soft ground ball to Jeter. High throw, the tag on Kendrick, and a 1 2 3 inning for Wong. In stark contrast to his rocky first inning, he retires the Angels in order here in the second. We played an inning and a half here at the stadium. Angels three and the Yankees nothing. You're watching Yankees baseball on Yes. Here's Giambi. Swings at the first pitch and fouls it back. Well, that would be for the Yank a good way for the Yankees to have Giambi remain the DH because they're not that comfortable with him playing first base. And if Sheffield comes back, getting him back in the lineup because right now there's a bit of a log jam in the outfield. And also, Sheffield thinks that if he can learn to play first base, 
maybe the Yankees bring him back next year. And uh, for those not familiar with the early years of Gary Sheffield's career, he came up as a third baseman with the uh, Milwaukee Brewers. There's a strike in the count one and two. And the count 2 2. There's that uh, up and in pitch. Uh, Yankees are going to go to Boston for a big five game series. And of course, everybody uh, that follows that series is aware of David Ortiz. I read today he's had, uh, I think he's got 30, 30 RBIs from the eighth inning on. But the Yankees charted their pitches against Ortiz from last year. 70, I want to say approximately 75 pitches. And how many do you think were like on the middle third of the plate or inside? Out of 75? Yeah. 10, 3. Wow. He has never, in all the years he's been with the Red Sox, really had to move his feet. Mike Sosha was talking about that with Mo Vaughn, who did so well in uh, Fenway Park, taking the ball away and hitting it away. Slow roller, left side. It's going to be a base hit. <laughs> he didn't try to go that way, but a somewhat fortuitous roller off the end of the bat. Again, a 3-2 breaking ball. Weaver's throwing a lot of breaking balls behind in the count. That's terrific control for a young pitcher. That's what you're trying to do to Jason Giambi. Take his power away, and nothing you can do about this one. A little cork screws it down to the left side. And Mo Vaughn would take that ball to the opposite way when he got out to California. He did that, or the, it was a little too deep out there. and uh, wasn't the same hitter. Here's Posada. He is in an 0 for 21 slump. And the last time he had a hit was the game winner, a home run in Baltimore. And that was on August 4th. That's a long time to go without a hit. Not only on Giambi, Kendrick behind him. I don't know that Joe would catch South a sound tomorrow night, but I think the trip they just came off to get in at five or six in the morning and the number of innings that Jorge catches with a day game today. If he, for example, if he did not play tomorrow night, he'd have almost like two and a half days off at this time of the year. Cool, cooler weather certainly helps, but uh, catchers would like to get a chance to get a little breather. That's uh, the most demanding pitch day in and day out is behind the plate. And a pretty good pitching matchup tomorrow night. Randy Johnson against John Lackey. And that's the finale of this four game set again. It will be on yes. Foul back. And the count levels at two and two. Giambi's on first. Yankees trail three nothing. We are in the bottom of the second inning. Two two. Still two and two. Well, the Yankees first look at uh, Jared Weaver, and you can see by the foul balls. Now that was a explosive fastball but so far what he's been able to do his breaking ball is very very slow it's down in the 70s so there's a big disparity between the velocity of the fastball and the curveball so Posada skips rope to get out of the way and the count now full of three and two not a great combination to send the runner here Giambi does not have much speed, and Posada will occasionally strike out. Jason does not go, and it's a good thing he doesn't. As Posada swings and misses, he's now 0 for his last 22. 
And again, after the uh, breaking pitches down in the 70s and low 80s, that fastball gets on you in a hurry and in a good spot. Here's Cano. He has been on fire since coming up the DL. Nine hits and 19 at bats, and four of the nine hits doubles. Two of the nine hits home runs. So six extra base hits out of nine. Kim Jones asked him, how's he doing it? He said, luck. <laughs> Talent. Maybe just everybody needs 35 games off in the middle of the season. Recharge the old batteries. And a strike. I'm sure Don Mattingly sitting there uh, charting the pitches or watching the way Weaver works. And uh, so far, it looks like the Yankee left hand hitters are, are going to have to try to take that fastball the opposite way. He's done a good job of keeping it out there. Grounded to second. This could be two. There's one, and there's two. A 4 6 3 double play as Weaver works out of any trouble. No runs a hit, no errors, and because of the DP, nobody left on base. Let's go to the third inning here at the stadium. It's 3 0 LA. Third inning, 3 0 Angels. Hyundai scoreboard. Orlando Cabrera leads off. Grounded foul. Cabrera with a single through the right side on a hit and run right where Cano was standing but he was covering when Howie Kendrick went to second so a hit and run single in the first for Cabrera count one and one Cabrera was a shortstop for the Red Sox when they won the World Series then became a free agent signed out here David Eckstein who was the shortstop out here ended up signing with the Cardinals and Edgar Renteria the shortstop for the Cardinals signed with the Red Sox but that didn't work out so they traded him to the Braves and he's had a much better season with the Braves than he did with the Red Sox but every time Cabrera comes back to Fenway Park they give him a very very warm hand he played shortstop for the team that won the World Series after 86 years without winning one One two. Nub foul. One two. Past the diving A rod into left field. So Cabrera leads off with a single. Ball's got a little top spin. Uh, watch that first high hop. Looks like right there, Alex is going to get it. And, uh, it gets past him when you're a ground ball pitcher like Chin Ming Wong. I remember the days when Tommy John and Gary Peters, Joel Horland pitched for the White Sox. Uh, Emo Bossard was the groundskeeper then. and. Uh, they used to be able to really pour the water on that area in front of home plate. Almost like the ball would get stuck there to try to slow it down a little bit. <laughs> Not quite as much, uh, I don't think, individual, you know, customizing for the various pitchers. Uh, when Harmon Killebrew was playing third base for the Twins, Billy Martin was our manager. Uh, Try to let the grass grow a little long, a little taller down, like to where A. Rod was. Slow the ball down a little bit. Now, is that considered illegal, Kitty, or is it just gamesmanship? Yeah, I, I guess it would come under home field advantage. I don't know how closely uh, Major League Baseball would monitor that I don't think there's any anything against letting the grass grow and softening up the ground of course then you're going to have the hitters saying hey you know we want it nice and firm and fast right back up the middle another ground ball that finds a hole a base hit for Vladimir Guerrero eight hits against Chin Ming Wong 
And again, another ground ball. Watch this first hop. It is a little higher than Chin Ming wants to throw it, but look at the high hop off that uh, area in front of home plate. Very firm there. And no chance for Wong to get it or Jeter. There's a look at that area right in front of home plate that's uh, playing a little bit firm today. Swing and a miss. It's like the height of the mound. Major League Baseball used to come around and uh, check out the slope. Uh, I think it's one inch per foot. So you had a six inch slope for six feet down off the off the mound. And then when when they would leave uh, the next day uh, the groundskeepers if you had guys that threw over the top they'd start shaving it down make that mound uh, give it a little more slope. The old uh, mound in Dodger Stadium when Sandy Koufax was there boy you could get a nosebleed on that thing it was just great the way it sloped down toward home plate. Kitty, that mound is legendary in baseball lore. Was it the greatest mound of all time? Oh, it was. You could be pitching in the ninth inning on that mound, and you could still see your spike marks, the individual, because there was so much clay. And like Koufax had a great overhand curveball, and I, I, I like to throw a curveball overhand in those days. And you could grip the mound with your front spikes, you know, and pull toward home plate. You, every time you went out there off that mound, you were confident you were going to have a good curveball. Along with Jim Cott, I'm Michael Kay. You're watching Yankees baseball on the Sunday afternoon right here on Yes. Thanks for joining us, everybody. 3 nothing Angels lead top of the third, threatening again. First and second, nobody out. Juan Rivera at the plate. The 0-2. Ground ball to Jeter. This should be two. There's one, and there's two. Moving to third is Cabrera. Well, you're a sinker ball pitcher. You just keep on trying to get as many ground balls as you can, and eventually one's going to be in a position where your infielders can turn to. Second baseman, Adam Kennedy. Second double play in the uh, first three innings, and uh, nothing new for Chen Ming Wong. Up foul. If you got a chance to read the New York Times today, Tyler Kepner had a really nice article where the insight on uh, Chin Ming Wong as a person about his uh, upbringing in Taiwan. Very nice story for those that to only know him uh, when you see him in pinstripes and not as a person. The 0 1. There's a strike. Also, interesting point in that story that Chin Ming Wong really didn't blossom until after the Randy Johnson deal, which was lucky for the Yankees because if he had shown what he shows now, the Diamondbacks would have taken yeah. him in that deal. They just glossed over him. They were given a list of prospects and they, they never even mentioned Chin Ming Wong. The 0 2. Swing and a miss. And Kennedy. Down on strike. So Wong works out of a first and second. Nobody out jam. No runs, two hits, no errors, and one man left. Let's take it to the bottom of the third. Three nothing Angels. The stadium. Under a brilliant sun. Just a beautiful day to watch a baseball game. And on the Hyundai scoreboard, three nothing Angels as we head to the bottom of the third. It'll be Wilson, Cabrera, and Damon. Wilson has a little streak that he'd like to end. He has struck out at least once in each of his last 12 games, but that is part of the deal with Wilson. He will strike out, especially against right-handers. The 1-0. Grounded to third. Quinlan. Long throw. Nice stretch by Kendrick. 
one away. Samsung's Four Seasons of Hope and Joe Torre have teamed up to make a difference in the community. For every Yankees home run hit at home this year, Samsung will donate $1,000 to Joe Torre's Safe and Home Foundation to help end the cycle of domestic violence. You can join the team and support Samsung's Home Run for Kids by visiting fourseasonsofhope.com or joetorre.org because a little hope can make a di big difference. There's Melky Cabrera, and there the pitch is high, 1-0. And the count two and up. Oh. On the outside corner, two and one. Not overpowering with this fastball, but certainly a case of spotting it, hitting the corners. He's at 89, 90. Sometimes he'll top out at 93, but he's just not going to blow it by you. There's a breaking ball. And I'll tell you, every time there has been a hitter's count, he's been able to get his breaking ball over. There again, two and one. Fastball count, hitter's count. And you mentioned the difference in the, uh, not overpowering, but the the key thing there is he'll throw some fastballs, a high 80s. That tells me that's a two-seam sinker. And then like the strikeout of Posada, he'll jack it up about four or five miles an hour. Ooh. Marvin Hudson looked like he was going to put the right arm up. Another example of uh, the good discipline of Melky Cabrera. Moved just off the outside corner. A little bit of an umpire's ball. Speaking of Melky Cabrera, let's check out the Bacardi scouting. He's a good two strike hitter. You see him right now spoil some two strike. He's using the whole field, and right now he is beginning to show more power. And the 3 2. Breaking ball, strike three. And that breaking ball has been very effective for Weaver. Again, a 3 2 count in a perfect spot. Here's Johnny Damon. And there's a breaking ball strike. Missed outside one on one. Other thing that uh, Weaver has been able to do today now is behind the count again. I mean, you can throw a big league hitter three consecutive curveballs, but the third one better be better than the second, the second better than the first. So far, he's had that little strike one curveball, and then when he gets deep in the count, it gets better. And the count three and one. Broken bat, line drive foul. Tony Pena has to get away the barrel of the bat. Fastball looked like moving away, might have got that on the end of the bat. Tony twits two ways, one for the foul ball, one for the bat. And the 3 2. Foul bat. That one 91 and again uh, inside forced him to put it's almost catfish hunter like you know hitters would come back to the bench cat wasn't a hard thrower but they'd come back and they'd say man he, he, he took just a little off that or he put a little on and you talk to catfish the next day he said hey they're all fastballs but you just don't throw them all the same speed. 
Sometimes on three and two, you're just trying to throw a strike, and you don't throw it with the same velocity that you do maybe an 0-2 pitch. So Damon battling here with two outs in the third. Yankees down three nothing, and Weaver deals. Just missed outside, so that's the second walk issued by the Angels rookie right-hander. Quest Tech might have got him there. I don't know if they have it out in Anaheim. <laughs> Napoli's glove barely had to move it. That was outside. Here's Derek Jeter. I asked Rex Hudler, the broadcaster for the Angels, the difference between Jeff and Jared. He said Jeff just didn't have the command that Jared has. He said the stuff's about the same. He said, but he couldn't put it exactly where Jared likes to put it. Count one and zero. Oh. Both kind of laid back California kids. Two and oh. There's Rex, the wonder dog. One of the uh, top draft picks of the Yankees back, what, about 86, 80? He was before that. Might have been before that. I think he's one of the first number one draft picks to uh, make it to the big leagues. Bounced around, but had a nice career. Mm -hmm. Utility guy. He was actually stuck in the Yankee minor league for a while and wrote a letter to George Steinbrenner. Really? And said, you know, Mr. Steinbrenner, I really think I deserve the chance, and I, you know, I think I've put together good numbers. I feel like I'm being ignored. The next day, he was moved up to Columbus from, like, double A. He'd been there for a couple of years, and he still has the letter that George Steinbrenner wrote him back, and wow. He said he thinks that that had a lot to do with it. Two one, upstairs three and one. Not a real good strike ball ratio, and uh, the Yankees. I mentioned this will be his biggest test. They're not uh, offering at a lot of those borderline pitches that maybe some of the other teams did that Jared Weaver faced. So uh, they're making him work, even though he's got a shutout, making him work hard. Strike painted on the outside corner in the count three and two. Well, you mentioned command, and that's a, it, it, he's either just off the corner or right on it, as that one was. But he's had excellent command of the fastball on both sides of the plate, and uh, again, we've seen the ability to throw the curve over in just about any count. Is outside, so two straight, two out walks. Well, that's one of the few times he did miss with the curve. Here comes Buddy Black, you know, back to Rex Hudler and the, the letter that he wrote. And as uh, as caring as he is, I, one of the most impressive things I was doing uh, network baseball for CBS went into St. Louis and did a game, and he called me over in the clubhouse and. Uh, a lot of, you know, players are making big money today, and sometimes uh, a lot of them, some are appreciative of it, but a lot of times they're not really cognizant of what former players had to go through. And Rex said, you know, I'm making more money than they ever dreamed I would make. And he said, I really appreciate you guys that played back in the 70s and 80s and some of the work stoppages that you held out for free agency. So, you know, guys like me, uh, even though we're not star players, have enjoyed making a pretty nice living. So uh, that's the only player 
uh, that I've ever had come up to me and mention that. This chiropractic telecast presented by authority of the New York Yankees and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the aforementioned New York Yankees. Whenever you see Rex before a game and say, how you doing? He'll go, I'm broadcasting baseball. What's better than that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's never had a bad day. Here's Bobby Abreu, and he steps in as the tying run, so the trip by Buddy Black to Jared Weaver is over. Abreu struck out on a breaking ball in the first inning. Weaver has five strikeouts. First and second, two outs. Low and inside, 1-0. and Damon's at second and Jeter's at first, so good speed on the bases for the Yankees. And Abreu with a 10-game hitting streak. Well, that's a good call by Napoli. If he was the one that called it, I didn't see Weaver shake him off. But the guy's having trouble with his control. He misses with one, and he, he's not afraid to come right back and double up with another curve, and he got it in there for a strike. Line to right field. That is going to be caught by Juan Rivera right off the shoe tops for the final out of the inning. So Abreu had a bid for an RBI, but a nice play by Juan Rivera who got a good jump, made the slide, and made the catch before the ball hit the grass. No runs, no hits, and two, two men left with the two walks. We played three. It's 3-0 three Angels. Question here in the top of the fourth. Mike Sosha, the Angels manager, caught two no-hitters while playing for the Dodgers. Tell me who the pitchers were. We'll tell you in the bottom of the fourth. Rob Quinlan takes a strike. I'm thinking the uh, we're both Cy Young Award winners back in the 80s. I think so. Met fans will always remember Sosha's home run of Dwight Gooden in the yep. NLCS in 1988. I think the Mets had won 11 of 12 during the regular season against the Dodgers, and that was the uh, the defining blow of that series. Dodgers went on to the World Series. What a turnaround for Chen Ming Wang since that first inning when he threw no first pitch strikes. Now he's thrown every hitter a first pitch strike. Lofted into right field coming on Abreu. Nice basket catch. One away. And the other first again like Rivera had to take it off his shoe tops. That is not as easy a play as it looks for an outfielder. That ball's hit with authority. It's got a little sinking action on it. And Abreu judges, judges it right. Makes a nice catch. The other first is uh, Chen Ming Wong. Is, this is the highest hit total he's ever surrendered in the first three innings. I think six of those in the first inning. Here's Curtis Pride who really helped him out in the first inning wrapping into an inning ending 4 6 3 double play. He had the bases loaded with one out and he uh, went 3 and 0 on Pride then threw a strike and then Pride hit into the double play. Count one and one. 50 pitches for Wong, 35 strikes. And the count one and two. You know, we talked about that Tyler Kepner story in the Times, and there was an interesting point. He said he gives a lot of credit to Neil Allen, who was a pitching coach with Columbus in 94, 2004, time flying. And uh, he's the one who really developed that power sinker that he throws. 
Also gives credit to Sal Fasano, who was the catcher with the Clippers right. that year. Surprisingly uh, for Neil, that shows you how you never know how a guy's going to develop as a pitching coach. Neil Allen was an over the top fastball curveball pitcher. Never really threw it. You never thought of him as a sinker ball pitcher. Swing and a miss and pride down on strikes. Fasano, I thought, had a very interesting comment. He said that Chimney Wong had an incredible aptitude, and you'll see this strike three, to pick up any pitch that you taught him. And he said at one point, Chin Ming Wong could actually throw six different pitches. He said, we had to stop him. He said, because you want him to concentrate on yeah. one or two. Yeah, there are some guys. Uh, I mean, Sam McDowell back in the 60s probably had the four best pitches of any pitcher. Fastball, curve, slider, change. But if he eliminated one, he probably would have been more successful. You're standing out there with four or five weapons. You don't know what one to throw. And then if you throw one, you, it gets hit. You second guess yourself. If you only got one or two pitches, that never, that never comes into play. And mention Chen Ming Wang could actually pitch a game with one pitch, that heavy sinker, if he had to. What do they say? He throws it about 90 percent of the time. I would say he's gotten some strikeouts now on either a splitter or changeup of some kind. But I, I would say a, a pitcher like Chen Ming Wang in his good games is going to be about 85 to 90 percent fastballs. The 2-0. High fly ball right field. Bobby Abreu backs up. He's there. And a 1-2-3 inning for Chin Ming Wong. So the Angels go down in order, and we go to the bottom of the fourth. Find out the answer to the trivia question, and Alex Rodriguez leads off. It's time for the answer to the Aflac trivia question. The Duck just kind of floated that time across the screen. Mike Sosha caught two no-hitters while catching for the Dodgers. Who are the pitchers? One might surprise you. Not an easy one to get. Fernando Valenzuela is the easy one. Kevin Gross, I don't know if many people yeah. would get that one. Hard throwing right handers, uh, similar to uh, the kind of pitcher Kevin Brown was when Kevin Brown was pitching effectively. Well, we go to the bottom of the fourth. It's A Rod, Giambi, and Posada against Jared Weaver, who carries a 3 0 lead into the bottom of the inning. Count one and zero. Oh. Fernando Valenzuela uh, brings back memories. Uh, Fernando Mania back in the early '80s uh, when he came on the scene with the Dodgers. That was an exciting time. There are very few pitchers that I can think of that you know drew drew more fans drew fans into the park above what your average everyday crowd would be. Of course, here the Yankees sell it out almost every day. But you go back to Sandy Koufax, uh, probably Nolan Ryan, and in Philadelphia in 1972 with Steve Carlton, and then Fernando. So uh, three of those drawing cards, left-hand pitchers. And interestingly, Jared Weaver's won his first seven major league starts, and he's the first pitcher in the majors to win his first seven starts of his career since Fernando won eight in a row for the Dodgers in 1981. Strike three, A Rod down looking. Not in love with that call. Well, it's really the first, if it is a borderline call, it's the first borderline fastball that has gone the way of the pitcher. <laughs> and, uh, again, with the umpire looking over the inside corner. I mean, mm. that missed that missed by more than any of the other pitches that he called balls. So Alex did not get the best of that call. And Napoli, a rookie, really jerked the ball back. It wasn't very smooth. That, that's a strange call by Marvin Hudson. Giambi, an infield single in the second. High fly ball left field. Pride shading his eyes. He's on the track at the wall. He'll make the play. Two outs. High sky, not only the sunglasses, but Curtis using the glove as well. Sort of feeling for the wall, and uh, I don't think it would have been out of the ballpark, but it would have been off the wall. Mm -hmm. 
mentioned earlier the, uh, the number of errors that the Angels have committed and you don't think of them as a home run hitting team and that's how things can you know what they they tell you what happened in the past but not in this series if Figgins catch Friday night was a big part of that game uh, they've hit what four home runs and in, uh, in the three game series you don't expect that. The 0 1 to Posada took something off that pitch. Posada way out in front, 0 and 2. Here's the one that really turned the Friday game around. Alex Rodriguez has scorched this. Two men on, nobody out. And that just turned the whole inning around and certainly was the play of the game. From up here, we did not know if that was going to fall in, but uh, after the game, Alex Rodriguez said that. He knew for sure that Figgins was going to catch it. Really? Yep. Certainly has a different vantage point than us. The 0-2. Oh. <laughs> Rookie catcher shouldn't do that. <laughs> no. But you, you know, he's probably guessing. Well, I mean, that, again, that pitch probably looked better. Let's see if it's got some late movement to it. Yeah, that that pitch was better. Alex is going to say to uh, Jorge Posada. I mean. What did you do to Marvin Hudson that I didn't do? Because he got the benefit of a much closer pitch. Yeah, a hitter can't hit a pitch that's six inches off the plate either way. So all they ask for is the umpire to be consistent. But if those pitches that are just an inch or two, you know, if, if those are strikes, hitters know that early in the game, you always have a much better game. What teams hate to have happened is you, you just never know which one's going to be called a strike which one a ball. That's a strike and Posada down looking seventh strikeout for Weaver Posada now carrying the weight of an 0 for 23. He doesn't like this call. You decide we go to the fifth three nothing, nothing angels the Chevy scoreboard three nothing angels as we go to the top of the fifth inning. We never learn Jim you know. Everybody's burying everybody early. You know, there's no way the White Sox could catch the Tigers. I was just as guilty. Well, the White Sox come into the game six and a half behind the Tigers. They very much can catch. Yeah, them. and you you can bet the Tigers are hearing those footsteps because they have a young team. They've never been in this position before, and you know you, you've lost four in a row and you come to the play. You don't have that real stud pitcher to look at and say he's going to stop the losing streak and. Uh, uh, you start coming to the ballpark every day saying well, we, are we ever going to win another one. Well if the White Sox could somehow win today five and a half and you've got about seven weeks left not too bad. Pitch the Figgins is outside one and oh. And the other thing from a Tiger standpoint they have gotten uh, nice years from a lot of young pitchers like Bonderman and Verlander and you get into September they're probably will have pitched more stressful innings than at any time in their career. Ground ball off the glove of a diving a rod and it trickles into left field. Figgins thinks about two he'll stop right there. Respect for Cabrera's arm. Lead off single for Figgins. Now they're picking on Alex nothing he can do about this one this pitch out away Figgins a little bit late on it. And uh, right there a little dive try to get leather on it and the play here he, he he touched it. But Cabrera hustling in and keeping figures to a single that's what's the important play because Jim Ming Wong's always capable of throwing that ground ball right there he has to put on the brakes. Melky doesn't get that uh, get to it in a hurry it changes the inning around. Here's Howie Kendrick. Now he's probably the second baseman of the future for the Angels. Uh, Adam Kennedy in the final year of his deal. And that's how you keep payroll at a decent level. You you plug in rookies that make the minimum and you let other guys go. And Kendrick's done well. He's hit 21 of his last 22 games. One and 
One thing that we've seen from Wong today, and although he straightened himself out since the first inning, he's been at about 96 on his fastballs, but today 93, 94. So he's he's lost some velocity. That shouldn't make that much of a difference. That's that's enough on that sinker to be successful. Now one more. Keeping Figgins close. Now, do they count those pitches? I don't think so. I saw Weaver throw one over there at pretty good speed. And that's a longer throw, isn't it? I guess it is. It should count as a pitch and a half. 1 1. There's a strike on a breaking ball. That's the best thing you can do with a guy on first base. Uh, <clears throat> that's a base dealer is just get ahead of that hitter. You see Kendrick take a pitch to uh, allow Figgins to go. Uh, a Gary Sheffield like move Kendrick does he bounces that bat off his back shoulder but again the advantage of being ahead in the count I mean right now if you want to pitch out you got a pitch to play with if uh, you're guessing that Figgins might be going enough foul in front of the plate Top slowly toward A Rod. Fields, he has one play, he makes it at first as Figgins advances to second. Nice play on the short hop. He, uh, he hadn't really had an easy play there yet today. A couple have gotten by him. Short hop there and with uh, Kendrick Speed gets him by a long stride, but from an angel standpoint. It works out fine. They get Figgins to second base, and uh, of course, he's a threat to steal third as well. There's Cabrera. He's two for two. Single right, single left. And he bunts foul. He had A Rod back. I guess if you've got Guerrero coming up next to most of the time you're the number three hitter you're already two for two and a man in scoring position the manager just soon see a swing to bat. Angels three for seven with runners in scoring position today. Lined right at Jeter. Two down.
Every time a Yankees pitcher strikes out an opposing batter, the Tri-State Hyundai dealers will make a donation to the Hope and Heroes Children's Cancer Fund and the Morgan Stanley Children's Hospital of New York Presbyterian. If you would like to contribute along with the Tri-State Hyundai dealers, log on to hopeandheroes.org. So the Yankees are going to intentionally walk Guerrero. Don't blame him. Got a parking spot for this guy. Keep it a three-run game. Not, no disrespect for Juan Rivera. He's really done well lately. But if you've got a chance to pitch around this guy, it's kind of like when you go to Boston. If you can avoid one of Manny Ramirez or David Ortiz, you try to do it. It's about the only way you're walking. So Joe decides to pitch to Juan Rivera with runners on first and second and two outs. Rivera, an RBI single right in the first, then right rounded into a 6 6 3 double play in the third. Biggins at second and Guerrero at first. Three nothing Angels were on the top of the fifth. Count one and zero. Oh. Rivera's eight for his last twenty four. Has really come into his own this year. Good power bat hitting for average. Former Yankee farmhand. The 1 0. 2 0. Strike from Chin Ming Wong, the count two and one. Wong has 73 pitches. We're here in the fifth inning. Angels with runners on first and second with two outs. Angels with three runs in the first inning. Chin Ming Wong came in with a 1.13 first inning ERA, and then he promptly gave up three runs on six hits. He's kept him quiet since then. Count two and two, and the Yankees have managed just one hit. A slow rolling infield single off the end of the bat by Jason Giambi toward third base. That's it against Jared Weaver. Runners go, pitch just misses outside, and a double steal. Like Jorge thought he didn't have any chance to throw the runner out, so he tried to do a good job of framing the pitch. And you see him tug it in a little bit, but it was clearly outside. Payoff is grounded through the left side for a base hit. Figgins scores. They'll hold up Guerrero. The throw is cut off by A-Rod. And now Rivera is getting himself into a rundown, but dives back. He wanted to get into a rundown, allowing Guerrero to score, but Guerrero stayed put at third, and the Angels lead 4-0. Uh, first of all, the uh, sequence from Chin Ming Wong. Falls behind Juan Rivera. Misses that one uh, slipped out a little early. 
That's it for strike two and one. Foul on the breaking ball, and that just missed the outside corner. And this looked like a breaking pitch that stays in the middle. No chance for Guerrero to score. Here's Adam Kennedy. The end, want to know. the end of that play there, A-Rod in a position where he, he had to throw it right away, but yet he had to turn around and check, see where Guerrero was. He didn't want to throw it to first and have the uh, have Guerrero round in third and get into home. Jin Ming Wong has allowed 10 hits in five innings. And you watch the game, he certainly has not been spanked. Just that one long drive, the home run leadoff home run by Sean Figgins. The rest of the uh, rest of the hits have been, you know, fairly hard hit ground balls, but ground balls nonetheless that have just been finding the holes. There's a strike. Yeah, other than Figgins' home run, and actually these are the kinds of guys that uh, you know could be pests for a pitcher like Chen Ming Wang. But the Angels are free swingers. They just make contact, spray the ball all over the field. Some days they're hitting ground balls right at people. You get them out in a hurry. Today they're they're finding the right spots. Caught by Wilson, saving another run. And that'll do it here in the fifth. One run, two hits, no errors, and two men left on base. At the end of four and a half, we're halfway way through. It's four nothing Angels. Heavy scoreboard 4 10 and 0 against Chin Ming Wong, 0 1 and 0 for the Yankees against Jared Weaver. Bottom third of the order for the Yankees, Cano Wilson and Cabrera. Soft ground ball to second base, Kennedy to Kendrick. One pitch, one out. Time now for the Hummer H3 20 fat. The Yankees' 20th World Championship was in 1962. That season, Mickey Mantle earned the AL MVP award. Tom Tresh was Rookie of the Year, and pitcher Ralph Terry was the World Series MVP. And you see those numbers there. The Hummer H3 with an EPA estimated 20 miles per gallon highway. Hummer like nothing else. Here's Craig Wilson. He grounded out to third in the third. I still get a nice Christmas card from uh, Tom Tresh every year because I helped him get that Rookie of the Year award. I think he might have <laughs> might have gotten four or five off me that year. Used to send a cab for me. There's a strike. Well, you've seen him for close to five innings now. Not even so much today does Weaver like the type of pitcher with lasting power to be a good pitcher for a while. Well, I would think so. I mean, he just uh, free and easy. You mentioned Dreiser. The impressive thing gets his breaking ball over the plate. High fly ball, deep left field. Pride back. Still back. Track. Wall. See ya. Home run, Craig Wilson. And the Yankees are on the board. Angels lead 4 to 1. I mentioned the variety of deliveries and you see Weaver hang his head. I think that's the first pitch that he tried to drop down a little bit farther than he has. You see him almost falling off toward third base and a little bit of a three quarter delivery he left it at the inside part of the plate. True to form Craig Wilson can pull a fastball. There's Melky. One and all. Again, you see Napoli and, and Weaver drops down, but doesn't get it out there. Yeah, but back to your point, if you've got a young pitcher like this with a, a two-seamer, four-seamer ability to get the curve over when he's behind and the count works fast, throws strikes. A lot to like. Ball 
Lofted out to left field, fairly deep. Curtis Pride back. Two away. The, the only challenge organizations have today, and we're seeing it happen with Francisco Liriano, when you've got young, talented pitchers, when you look at their records, they never log as many innings. There again is that really almost sidearm delivery that Weaver left on the inside or in the middle of the plate. They never really get a chance to log a lot of innings in the minor leagues. And then all of a sudden you get to the latter part of a season like this, you know, and your team is in contention. And organizations start saying, well, I got to look at the future of this pitcher. You got to shut them down. And the only way they're going to overcome it is you got to start developing, training them in the minor leagues to, uh, to pitch deeper into games. Swing and a miss, and Damon down on strikes. Well, the Yankees finally get a run on Craig Wilson's solo home run. No errors, nobody left. Five in the books, four to one, Angels lead. Time for the Subway game summary. 4-10-0, beating 1-2-0. Figgins, two for three, a solo home run, a 374 hitter against the Yankees lifetime. Juan Rivera, two for three, two ribbies, 67 ribbies this year. Jim Ming Wong, three runs allowed in the first. He had three runs allowed in the first inning of his previous 24 starts. A statistical blip that bit the Yankees on this day. The first pitch to Quinlan is outside 1-0. Pitches by inning, as you can see, he averages 13.9 per inning. He has 79 over 5. That one is served into right field to base hit. Bobby Abreu will flip the ball in. So a leadoff single for Rob Quinlan. He's 2 for 3. And that's a career high hits allowed. And that swing is an example. Look where this pitch is. See, down and away from a pitcher standpoint, that's not a bad spot, but these angel hitters almost mirror their hitting coach, Mickey Hatcher. Mickey is a guy that would swing at anything close, use the whole field, you know, is not a, a batting champion or anything like that, but the approach that these guys have, they just keep slapping it the other way and putting it in play. Here's Curtis Pry, Angels lead 4-1. to one. Pride's 0 for 2. And the pitch is low, 1 and 0. 4 6 3 double play. Bases loaded in the first inning, struck out in the fourth. Right back to Wong. Let's see if they could turn two. There's one. Not in time. It took a while for Wong to throw the ball. He waited for Jeter to get to second base, and that cost him the double play. Yeah, in spring training, you work on this play. Watch Chin Ming Wong. See, right there, if he leads Jeter, but he waits till he gets to the bag. You don't really have to wait till the shortstop gets to the bag. You just lead him like a quarterback would lead a wide receiver. And then Derek could catch the ball like two steps from the bag. And that's the difference between just getting Curtis Pride and having him just beat it out. Also, if you wait like that, you can get Jeter hurt. Runner was right on top of Jeter when he caught the ball. There's Mike Napoli. He's 0 for 2. doing some housekeeping around first base. Napoli is four for his last 47. So the rookie catcher having some offensive problems for the first time. 231, 12 homers, 29 ribbies. Interesting, the... Uh 
Angel runners get on first base a base stealing situation Chin Ming Wong has either thrown over there or held the ball a long time and I think every pitch after that has been a ball that's what speed can do to the game and attention to a base runner. Saw Curtis uh, smoothing that dirt out around first base. And you mentioned uh, can big league teams do this? You know, when the Maury Wills, a great base stealer with the Dodgers, would come into town. That's how they won their game stealing bases. Teams would put a couple extra bags of dirt, almost like beach sand, over at first base where, where he took his lead. Try to slow him down. Count one and one. I think it was in the Giants playoff game in uh, 62. The Giants ended up winning and going to the World Series that they they made the ground crew come out with a shovel and actually take a lot of that dirt away. Oh really? Yeah, they had it like quicksand out there. Along with Jim Cott, I'm Michael K. You're watching Yankees baseball right here on the Yes Network. Top of the sixth inning, Angels four, Yankees one. Swing and a miss. Breaking ball. Didn't get that far behind Wilson, so Pride has to stay where he is. Tough play for Wilson. Had to reach into the runner, but uh, at least got leather on it. That kept Pride from advancing. Wilson, the Yankee offense so far today with that home run in the fifth. Four to one Yankees with just two hits against Jared Weaver. And the count two and two. Running count right here. Only a decision Mike Sosha would make is he have confidence in the Napoli to make contact. Knows that uh, Wong wants to throw a strike right here. Keep it from going to three two. Missed outside three and two. Diggins on deck. Let's see if they send pride on three two. They do. Pitch is low. So Napoli walks last thing you want to do to the number nine hitter with Figgins who's always hurt the Yankees coming up and that's probably the first activity we'll see in the Yankee bullpen and uh, even though he's given up 11 hits couple of walks four runs I think as a manager uh, Joe Torre still feels comfortable with Chen Ming Wang because we talked about the fact that one pitch he can get you right out of trouble but uh, now you're looking at a, a speedster like Sean Figgins and uh, so Gator's going to Take a trot out to the mound. And also, the Yankees are in the middle of a stretch right now where they don't have a day off. They play 21 games in a period of 20 days. And the bullpen has been taxed. You can't keep going to the bullpen every single day for multiple, multiple innings. So they're going to try to squeeze as much as they could out of Chen Ming Wong. I believe August 28th is their next day off. Ron Ballone will begin to warm in the Yankee bullpen, and on that day, they're really flying cross country after the game against the Angels. So it's kind of a half day off.
Cal 1 0. Got to be the lowest percentage of first pitch strikes that uh, Chen Ming Wong has had all year. After the first inning, he uh, he started getting much more economical ahead of the hitters. Now the last two, he's kind of tailed off again. Hit sharply and off the glove and trickling in the right field. Bobby Abreu comes up and stopping at third is Curtis Pride. So Wilson almost came up with a beautiful play, but just couldn't quite snare it. At least Craig Wilson kept the double play in order. The uh, runners had to hold, and he got leather on it. Forced the Angels to hold the runner at third with Abreu uh, charging. And so even though the bases are loaded with one out, the double play is still in order. It is amazing over the years how the Yankees simply cannot stop Sean Figgins. He's three for four today, and he's 38 for 100 against the Yankees' lifetime. That's 380. Here's Howie Kendrick. Curtis Pride's at third, Napoli's at second, and Biggins is at first. One man out, top of the six. Yankees trying to hold it right here at 4-1. They'd sign up for a double play right here. That's not what they're getting, though. Line drive to left field. Melky Cabrera will have the plate on a hop. One run scores. The other runners move up. Base is still loaded. RBI single for Kendrick, and the Angels lead 5-1. Uh, this is probably uh, the telling sign when a when a pitcher's had to labor like Chen Ming Wong has had. He's a ground ball pitcher, and the Angels have hit a lot of ground balls right at people. I mean, right in the hole. But now they're starting to get it into the air, even though that was a broken bat hit. Uh, Joe's going to go to the mound, make a change. Well, with Orlando Cabrera due up and the bases loaded and one out, uh, Joe will signal for Ron Belong. So this is going to do it for Chen Ming Wong. A rare bad start for him on the stadium mound. He's been so great here in the Bronx. He's really been outstanding the entire year. So I'm sure he gets a mulligan from the fans. Malone comes in and he comes into a sticky situation. 5-1 Angels. Chen Ming Wong's day is over and Joe Torre makes the call to the bullpen brought to you by the McDonald's dollar menu. So a rough day for Wong. Five and a third. 13 hits. Five runs. All three runners on base are his responsibility. He walked two, struck out three and threw 93 pitches. Malone has done a really good job in this particular role, not only uh, holding the opposition down when they're ahead, but uh, getting some big outs, less than a hit per inning. Good earned run average. And the pitch to Cabrera is a strike. And uh, Chen Ming Wong's day is just one of those turn the page. I mean, uh, if you only have one of those out of every 25 starts, you'd be pretty happy. You might go out there the next game with the same stuff and all the ground balls are right at people and uh, he's given up no runs in eight innings and keeping his pitch count down that's the uh, that's what you live with as a sinker ball pitcher you know a more conventional pitcher uh, say a, a Mike Messina or a Randy Johnson they have a way that they can go to maybe and say I'm going to try to strike this guy out Wong is not that kind of pitcher he just continues to Hope that he gets ground balls at people. One one. One and two. Right on target. One of the uh, fastball inside. Big swing by Cabrera.
Goes upstairs and Cabrera swings through two away. Big strikeout for Ballone. Boy, another good job by Ballone. Bases loaded. Long, big swing by Cabrera. And, uh, now it gets a little tougher. Gets tougher with Vladimir Guerrero, 284 hitter with the bases loaded, four grand slams. Wong can only watch. And the count 1 0. As the year has gone by, Ballone has worked in bigger and bigger situations for the Yankees. He has earned that right the way he's pitched. Guerrero, though, against Valone lifetime, eight for 23, a home run and three doubles. High fly ball, center field. Johnny Damon is there, and he'll make the play for the final out of the six. But the Angels get one run on three hits, no errors, and the bases are left loaded. Valone does a good job again. And now, here's a word from Fox News Channel. Sitting, a great job by Ron Ballone keeps the game within reach. Angels lead the Yankees 5 to 1, 5 13 and 0 for the Angels, and 1 2 and 0 for the Yanks. Derek Jeter's going to lead it off against Jared Weaver as the Yankees try to do something against the rookie right hander. It'll be Jeter, Abreu, and Alex Rodriguez. Weaver has walked Jeter twice. Jeter against the Angels, one for nine in this series. Although the Yankees haven't done much against Weaver, they've certainly built up this pitch count. He's thrown 96 pitches in this game and He's only just begun the sixth inning. We have him at 95, 57 strikes. The 1 0. There's a strike, and the Angels getting their bullpen busy. The most overriding fear of you, the Angels, is you, know, you have to protect this young pitcher. Now, this game is important, but his career is important as well. You don't want to go that far over 100, and they know that if this is a typical Yankee inning, he'll be up around 110, maybe even more. Brennan Donnelly and J.C. Romero. Romero, the left-hander. And the 2-1. A uh, strike, and the count 2-2. Two and two. Yankees have not been overly pleased with Marvin Hudson, the home plate umpire. And this will be his 100th pitch, the 2-2. Ground ball up the middle and through for a base hit. Yankees third hit of the afternoon, a leadoff single by Jeter. Left it out over the plate just a little more than he wanted to. And this is an inning. The Yankees almost, if they're going to make something happen, it has to be this inning because after uh, six, you're going to be looking at Shields and Frankie Rodriguez. They are as a twosome with Proctor, Farnsworth, and uh, Moar as a threesome for the Yankees. Here's Abreu. He is 0 for 2. Swings at the first pitch, rare for him in the count 0 and 1. And the 0 1. Grounded to first. Kendrick will go to second for one. Back to first. Not in time. Almost turn two. A pretty nice play for a guy who's not accustomed to playing first base. Gets on him in a hurry. 
Makes a nice pivot. And Abreu just beats the return throw. Probably buys Weaver uh, another hitter. Again, we see the pitch count, the way uh, organizations pay attention to it, that uh, you wouldn't think that they would allow him to go too much deeper into the game. Rounded to third. Let's see if they turn two. There's one, and there's two, and around the horn double play. So Weaver has pitched a complete six, and the Boobirds raining down on Alex Rodriguez after that DP ground ball. No runs a hit, and no errors, nobody left. Let's take it to the seventh. It's the Angels five and the Yankees one. We go to the seventh inning here at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. The IO Digital Cable scoreboard at five to one. The Angels over the Yankees, five thirteen and zero, beating one three and zero. And it'll be Rivera, Kennedy, and Quinlan against Ron Valone. And the pitch outside, one and zero. When the, when the hitting coaches of each team, Don Mattingly and Mickey Hatcher, look at the spray charts today when the game is over, I think one of the big differences in the way, the reason the Angels have been able to be successful, uh, the Yankees have guys that swing with more authority. The Angels have hitters that, you know, Rivera can hit it out of the ballpark and uh, Guerrero. Line drive to left field, Cabrera. Wow, nice play. That had some serious sinking action to it, but for the most part, the Angel hitters have gone the other way, put it in play. The last double play, here's Melky. Ball sinking and looks it into the glove. The last at bat by Alex, you know, pulled it to the third baseman. The, the Angels in those situations have been taking the ball the other way. Cabrera's really done a good job in left field. Nine outfield assists, tracks the ball very well. He's actually become a weapon for the Yankees out there. He's got a much better arm than Hideki Matsui and has been tracking the ball better than Hideki did at the beginning of the year. Speaking of Matsui, before the game, he was doing some warming up in the outfield. Right about the same time that Gary Sheffield was learning to play first base. You know, Joe Toy said something very telling before yesterday's game. He said, you know, the possibility exists they might not come back this year. He said, everybody seems to think that it's going to happen. He said, we think it's going to happen. He said, but they just shut Matsui down for 10 more days. And, you know, if he starts swinging a bat at the end of the 10 days and everything's fine, who knows if he's going to be ready. Maybe there's going to be another setback, and they're hoping that Sheffield returns in the middle of September. There is a possibility that neither will come back. Well, and I think that's why they went out and made the uh, trade for Abreu. You know, and even if they do come back, is Matsui going to be step be able to step in and play the way Melky Cabrera has? I mean, if Cano came back and didn't miss a beat, but uh, every player doesn't do that. And if you're in a tight pennant race, can you afford to bring a guy back and say, well, let's give him a couple weeks to kind of get his timing and get in shape? I mean, I think the Yankees have found a left fielder in Melky Cabrera that they can say, well, we want a guy who can hit 30 home runs, but okay, you got a guy at second base that might hit more home runs. So there's your, you get your power there instead of from left field. Switch hitter, excellent outfielder, beginning to show some power. And uh, for his age, what a disciplined hitter. 
Three two. Foul back. And one other thing to factor in when it comes to Matsui and Sheffield coming back. Let's say that they're both cleared to start swinging at the end of uh, August. Well, then you've run out of uh, minor league games for them to rehab in. Minor league season ends at the end of August, beginning of September with the playoffs, and it'll be tough for them to get that same timing down playing in uh, simulated games in Tampa. The 3 2 inside Kennedy walks. See Gary Sheffield in your picture. If you missed it, uh, we showed some shots of him before the game working with Don Mattingly and uh, Larry Boa. Um, uh, developing the skills of a first baseman. Here's Rob Quinlan. The long deals, pitches high. Back in our old slow pitch softball days, Zim and I used to play that down St. Pete. See, then you had a what you call a roaming outfit you play with 10 guys that, that the Yankees need another position they don't have room for all of them well when the deal was made for a breaker the Yankees realized well, it's a deal they had to make for this year. Next year, it does cause some some logjam problems. Abreu signed to another year. Hideki Matsui, when he comes back, has three more three more years left on his contract, and so does Johnny Damon. And there are your three outfielders. But he did talk with Joe Torre, and Joe Torre and Brian Cashman had spoken at the beginning of the year about they'd like to have an outfielder that could almost be a fourth regular outfielder, where everybody gets a rest. And uh, Joe said that's what Melky could be next year. Play left field one day, center field another, right field the next, and an outfield version of Sean Figgins. Also, one thing that the injury to Matsui does, Jim, is now Joe Torre doesn't have to worry about playing him every day because I think that that was somewhat of an albatross that that consecutive game streak like it was uh, for Cal Ripken when he was going through his streak well it's a nice problem to have as an organization the, the main goal for the Yankees is they don't worry about next spring they're trying to be the last team to win a game in October and anything less than that uh, in this organization doesn't seem to be acceptable three one Chase is a high fastball three and two. You know getting just getting to the World Series or getting to postseason play is an accomplishment. Once you get into short series there's a there's a lot more I don't want to say luck but it's, it's tougher to win over the long haul. It is, it is in five games or seven games. Got him picked off. Wilson's throw to Jeter. He applies the tag on Kennedy and it's a caught stealing 1 3 6. Well, you can expect 3 2 and on a left hand uh, pitcher. Kennedy says, Let me go on first movement. Wilson does a nice job to come meet the throw and the, the rest is pretty elementary for Derek. Just catch the ball, make the tag. 12 stolen bases for Kennedy caught stealing seven times not a great percentage. So now a 3 2 count on Quinlan. And the pitch strike three Quinlan down looking. Good inning for Ron below no runs no hits. No errors and because of the caught stealing nobody left on base at the end of six and a half it's time for the seventh inning stretch. Thank you Bob. Back here in the Bronx on the IO Digital Cable scoreboard, the Angels lead the Yankees 5-1, and the day is over for Jared Weaver.
He did well. He got into a pitch count problem, six innings, and he allowed just three hits and one run. The only mistake, the home run to Craig Wilson. So they turn it over to Brendan Donnelly. And what they'll try to do, Donnelly in the seventh, Shields in the eighth, Francisco Rodriguez in the ninth. And then you see what Donnelly's done, less than a hit per inning, 41 strikeouts in 47 innings, 2-0, 44 games of 4.21 ERA. He's going to face Giambi, Posada, and Cano. And the pitch. There's a strike. Because the back end of the Angel bullpen is very reliable, they just need six innings out of their starter. Anything that their starter could give them more than that, it's gravy, but they feel very comfortable turning over any sort of lead to Donnelly, Shields, and Rodriguez. Another solid outing by uh, Jared Weaver. In fact, Michael, it was uh, the early part of 2004. I think maybe it was last year, but uh, they, the Angels actually felt after five innings they were in pretty good shape. Kevin Gregg got off to a a great start big right hander coming out of the bullpen tailed off a little from the middle of the season on but they had four guys coming out of there high fly ball just got under it shallow right backing up Kennedy coming in Rivera and Rivera makes the call on the catch one down in the seven. Hey fans get a second chance to see the latest game with WB Mason presents Yankees on courts only on yes. Tune in every night of the next morning at 9 for the big hits and great plays of this game another time around. Don't miss WB Mason Presents Yankees Encore. It's only on Yes. Here's Posada struck out twice, once swinging, once looking against Jared Weaver. He is 0 for his last 23. And Donnelly tries to tie him up the count 1-0. We were talking last inning about the possibilities of the Yankees with all their outfielders. And when you look at uh, the important players in the game, uh, Whitey Herzog in uh, the early 80s built his staff from the ninth inning back. The Yankees would have a few chips. What, what they really need to do, if, they're, if it's out there, is get one or two quality arms that can come out of the bullpen in the fifth sixth seventh inning and lighten the load on uh, Proctor and Farnsworth and particularly Proctor Farnsworth just a one inning guy anyway popped up shallow left Cabrera two down but we talk about the uh, the matchups the starting pitchers I mean Every game, what does it come down to? Who can get the uh, the big outs? You look at, uh, at Mari Mariano Rivera, who until Billy Wagner came along was the highest paid closer. Mo might be the biggest bargain in baseball. And you look at the high salaries uh, that the Yankees have in their position players, and they don't need any more. They score at least four runs a game. They're not doing it today, but they score at least four runs a game as much as any team in baseball and have as many wins when they do that. Point being, they don't need more offense. They need they need to shore up the uh, the bullpen in the middle of the game on. And a strike to Cano. Cano is 0 for 2 today. Two ground balls to second. One resulted in a double play. Nine for 21 since coming up the DL. This guy's just rocking fire, Brendan Donnelly. You can see why he said he missed a, a little time with neck and back problems. He snaps that neck toward home plate. Count two and two. A 
almost looks a little bit like that uh, hard throwing reliever the Yankees had years ago with glasses. Ryan Duran. <laughs> Ryan didn't throw quite as many strikes as Brendan does. And his glasses were a bit thicker. High fly ball left right field backing up is Rivera. He's on the track and he makes the play in front of the wall for the final out of a one two three inning. Seven in the books here at the stadium. Angels five Yankees one. You're watching Yankees baseball right here on the Yankees Entertainment and Sports Network. Let's take a look at the Angels in game box score sponsored by your Tri-State Lincoln and Mercury deal with 13 hits in there. And that's with Curtis Pride and Mike Napoli not having any. The top of the order, top three in the order, seven hits. And that'll do it. Chin Ming Wan simply didn't have it. He gave up three hits and six runs in the first inning, and the Angels have not looked back. So Ron Ballone deals to Curtis Pride, and he deals him a strike. Ballone came in in the sixth to get the final two outs, then pitched essentially a one, two, three inning in the seventh, just facing the minimum three batters. Count one and one. They're going to need another pitcher, the Yankees. They're not going to use the loan in the ninth as well. And Jose Barris is up in the bullpen. Count one and two. And there's Barris. One two pitch foul back on winning teams really you're using uh, seven or eight pitchers in all the winning games if you look but you have to have those extra pitchers in games that you're losing but a game like today it's not quite out of reach so Joe brings in Valone you know to do some damage control which he's done a great job of but now if they don't win today then it shortens it up for tomorrow because uh, you wouldn't expect him to come in and pitch tomorrow high drive center field Damon there one away so in uh, the way the game is played today with five man rotation not as many complete games you really have to extend that eight quality pitchers to ten you got to be able to have ten you know five relievers that you feel comfortable coming into the game when you've got the lead so you don't have to over you and as good as the angel bullpen is Mike Sosha says I'm in the same situation he's I get down to those last two innings it's going to be Shields and Rodriguez and if you got a chance to win the game you're going to use them. there's Napoli and the pitch low one and oh Napoli is 0 for 2 with a walk the walk in the sixth inning one for 10 in this series And the count two and oh. Scott Shields has been warming up, so he'll come in in the eighth. Count two and one. Napoli split, splitting the catching time with Jose Molina. Benji Molina had been the catcher for the past couple of years for the Angels and became a free agent. They did not try to keep him. He misplayed his free agent hand. Mets offered him three years at 21 million. He wanted more. And then the game of musical chairs, the music stopped and he didn't have a place to sit. So he had to sign a one year deal with the Blue Jays for about five million. And you can see the Angels probably made a smart move because you watch Benji Molina now. He's not the same catcher, and he's almost lost his job to Greg Zahn. They're kind of splitting time with the Blue Jays. Two two. Napoli swings and misses two away. Well, in the seventh inning. Adam Kennedy was on first base and let's take a look at the low jack caught stealing. Yeah Ron Valone has done a great job shutting down the opposition and here he makes a 
timely pickoff move to get Adam Kennedy. That's the Bojack caught stealing. Here's Sean Figgins, the Yankee nemesis, three for four against them today. Home run leading off the game. He scored two runs, stole a base as well. And a strike. So Benji Molina gets the Jody Reed Award. Mm -hmm. The Yankee fans, before the Yankees got back into prominence for a long time, it was Red Sox versus Oakland. Jody Reed was an excellent second baseman. Agent thought he could get more money. I think he had a four or five year deal on the table. And he uh, turned it down. The next thing you know, he's playing as a non rostered uh, player with the Brewers and never did come back to play the way he did with uh, the Red Sox. There are a few of those contracts that jump out at you. One of them also is Juan Gonzalez, who was offered about $140 million to play in Detroit. Now, I don't know if it was Detroit or the money, he decided not to sign it, and he's never made that money. A lot of leg problems, signs one year deals, gets hurt. I think he's playing in the independent league now in Long Island. And all he had to do was sign his name and be guaranteed $140 million. Wow. Up and in. Well, that's that's the first time that's happened to uh, an angel hitter. Now, Figgins is 0 for 11 against Valone. You see where Posada wants it. And again, that those pitches off times are. Let's see where this is. See, it's not it's not up near his head, but hitters are not accustomed to getting backed out of the box like that. And he worked it away. Wanted that call on the count. Now full of three and two. And the payoff to Figgins. He walked him. Last thing you want to do with Figgins. And Joe Torrey is going to go to his bullpen. Malone's already thrown 39 pitches, doesn't want to push him any more than that. Again, I repeat, the Yankees don't have an off day till the 28th of August. You don't want to lose Malone for two days. With this outing, probably they would not use him tomorrow. So Joe goes to the bullpen. It's going to be Jose Veras. Runner on first, two outs. You come on back. Angels win 5-1. 5-1, Angels lead the Yankees, and the Yankees turn to Jose Veras. Gets a chance to get a few uh, outs and keep this a 5-1 game. Good year down at uh, Columbus. A lot of saves. Good uh, strikeout to innings pitch ratio. I would think right now his... Uh, be aware of uh, Figgins trying to steal second base. That's almost a given with two out. And that would have been the one advantage to keeping in Valone because he could have kept Figgins closer as a left hander. Varis is a big guy, very big, about 6'5, six, 6'6, six, six, and has a lot of body to unfold to get the ball to the plate. Figgins leads off first. And they're keeping him close. Angels lead baseball with 113 stolen bases on the year. That's their game. Harris taking forever. Kept bobbing his head up and down, trying to break the rhythm of Figgins. Kind of flinched on the breaking ball for a strike.
He is really preoccupied with Figgins. And now Jeter's going to say, hey, get the batter. <laughs> Derek said, I got dinner reservations. Now, I think a lot of these signs are called from the uh, from the bench. Maz sends, sends them in. Sometimes they just want the pitcher to hold the ball for a while, see if the runner will commit. But like you mentioned with the rhythm, it's actually the Figgins is a guy that disrupts the rhythm of the pitcher. As you can see right now. And the count one and one. One one. Breaking ball strike. Red Sox lead seven to four over the Orioles in the fifth inning. So if they win that game and the Yankees don't come back here, the lead in the American League East would be down to one. Yankees in first in the East, Red Sox in second. Runner goes. There's a fly ball to left field coming on. His Melky Cabrera can't make the play. Flips the ball into second, and Figgins will stop at third. So a base hit for Kendrick. His third of the day. Early in the game, we talked about you can throw three breaking balls to uh, each hitter, but one better be better than the next one. And that, that was in a good spot, but it obviously didn't have the same bite. You could see Kendrick reach out and get the barrel on it. And Figgins with a good jump picks up the flight of the ball. He can cruise into third. Now Veras deals with Cabrera, who's two for four. And the pitch outside, one and oh. It's one of Billy Martin's favorite situations. First and third, two out. He'd have that runner at uh, first. Kendrick, he'd take about six steps and fall down as soon as the pitch was thrown. And then that draws the attention of the catcher, so they throw it down to first base, and the guy on third scoots home. And a strike. Good but fastball by Varis. Especially if it goes to a two strike counter. The other one is as soon as. Uh, Varus comes set try to take advantage of a rookie pitcher the rudder at first just takes off it forces the pitcher to step off the rubber and pay attention to him and with fig and speed he can scoot home on that kind of play another strike you don't see that that often and it's probably because of the fact there's so many home runs in the game you don't have to manufacture that baby run you're exactly right it's the same reason when you got a lead like this late in the game you keep stealing and trying to add on Keeping Kendrick close. Runner goes. The one two is grounded foul. You know, Ebon with a nice play, third base coach. The wheels are turning.
They're turning too much, so Posada yeah. says, wait a minute, let's get this right. I guess that's consistent with just about all sports where it used to be in the hands of the guys between the lines. Now there's so many plays called in football and probably in basketball as well, much more of a, a coach's or a manager's game. Runner goes. Again, grounded foul. I mean, uh, I used to work the sidelines when Fran Tarkenton was quarterback of the Vikings, and they could, you know, with Chuck Foreman, they could just get down the ground, use their finger, and draw a play, go here and there. Now, now you wait till they they come in from the sideline. Boy, that would take a lot of the ingenuity away from a guy like Tarkenton. Now they've got the cordless headset in yeah. the in the helmet. It would be somewhat cumbersome to have the cord coming out of the helmet. <laughs> Limit the running ability. <laughs> right. First and third, two outs. Five one Angels lead, top of the eighth. Run it goes again. But Cabrera swings and misses, and Veras works out of trouble. No run to hit, no errors, and two men left on base. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. Angels five, Yankees one. You are watching, yes. Well, we head to the bottom of the eighth, and it's uh, time for the in-game box score sponsored by your Tri-State Lincoln and Mercury dealer. And uh, Jared Weaver and then Brendan Donnelly have really shut down the Yankees. Derek drew a couple of uh, walks. He's one for one. Giambi has a hit. Craig Wilson has a hit. That's a home run, and that does it for the Yankees. So Joe Torre trying to figure out how to get runs against this bullpen. Now it's Scott Shields' turn. And Wilson will lead it off. Fouled away. Shields' his numbers, 2.63, way less than a hit per inning. Strikeout to walk ratio outstanding. And as Jim mentioned uh, on Friday, rubber arm. He just wants to pitch, and you can pitch him every day. And it doesn't seem to be a loss of stuff. Because with some guys, they want to pitch every day, but you can right. see a drop in stuff. Yeah, he's a good example of, uh, you know, the way he pitched in college. If you train a young pitcher to, you know, to throw more and pitch more innings, you'll develop more arm strength. Tap back to Shields. One away. If you, uh, if you missed it Friday night, the example of uh, Scott Shields, uh, you know, the rubber arm factor, the fact that he can throw a lot of pitches in college, 16 innings, about 260 pitches. He threw back at uh, Lincoln Memorial in Tennessee so that's the way you uh, you build up some arm strength and he's got starter stuff he started uh, a few games early two years ago he's got three or four pitches I mean what a weapon for a team And you can have a great closer, and if you don't have a good setup guy, you'll never get to that closer because starters just don't go eight anymore. Count one and two on Cabrera, who's 0 for 2 today. High fly ball, shallow left coming on his pride. Two outs. And, and the other impressive thing about the Angels pitchers today, even Friday night with rookie Joe Saunders, uh, there's no intimidation factor coming into Yankee Stadium. I mean, it's just here it is, strike one, hit it if you can. You saw it from Weaver, though. He had some deep counts, and then Domley now shields. That gives you the impression that you're in control of the game. There was a little blip in the paper today about Sal Barber and uh, Sal the Barber Magley and how many guys he hit and his quote was you know I wanted to I wanted to let him know who was in charge of the game. Strike to Damon. 
Damon struck out in the first, walked in the third, and struck out again in the fifth. And the count quickly 0 and 2. And the count 0 2, and pitch is low 1 and 2. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. Angels lead the Yankees 5 to 1. You see what Damon's done against Shields 3 for 13, a double, and a home run. 5 14 and 0 for the Angels, 1 3 and 0 for the Yankees. Shields deals the 1 2 upstairs with the fastball. And Derek Jeter is on deck. Yankees have managed just three hits in this game an infield single by Giambi, a single by Jeter. And a home run by Wilson as Johnny Damon goes down looking, and he has struck out three times this afternoon. Yankees go down in order, and we go to the ninth. It's 5-1 Angels. We go to the top of the ninth inning, and Jose Barris will try to keep it right here at 5-1. He'll face the middle of the order for the Angels, Guerrero, Rivera, and Kennedy. Guerrero today is one for three and was intentionally walked. Fouls it back. He comes out of the dugout swinging, Jim. Oh, man. He's a chiropractor's dream. I mean, he snaps every vertebrae with it. Between Donnelly and his neck, and check out this way. I mean, uh, years ago, there was a big left-hand hitting first baseman for the Orioles, uh, Jim Jim Teal. They called him Diamond Jim, and he had to wear a pad on his back because when he, you know, on his follow-through, he'd hit himself in the back with the uh, barrel of the bat. Guerrero almost does the same thing. The 0-1. Foul away. He's had some back problems, and that's why when he became a free agent, although he's he's one of the best players you'll ever see, there was some limited interest in him because they thought his back would go out even more. Mm. The 0-2. At the time, the Mets had made an offer to sign him, but they insisted on really strong physical and they did not want to guarantee the contract that if in fact his back went out he would not be uh, given the money he said I don't think so and I believe the Angels came in with a five year deal but he probably got less than his market value at the time because in his last year in Montreal his back did go out and put him on the DL for a little bit the O2 upstairs one and two and he really hasn't missed a lot of time no. since then has he he strikes me as the kind of you're not going to see him in the uh, weight room pumping weights I wouldn't think which uh, most of the guys that do that they tend to come up with more injuries and the uh, guys that just hit run and throw and stretch one two just got a piece of the bat the big uh, pregame preparation for Guerrero from what I hear he'll play PlayStation for two three hours really just sit there and play video games looks like he thinks that one might have got him on the uh, on the fingertip again I think uh, I think Guerrero and then the pitch from Valone to Figgins that's the only time we've we've really seen the angel hitters get a little uncomfortable back him out of there yeah that caught uh, maybe the knob of the bat and you see where his hand is over the bat A one two in the dirt count two and two. Ferris was kind to him there. Usually when a pitcher sees that happen the next pitch boom you're right back in there again. And the two two pitch comes inside that time too far inside three and two. Middle of the sixth inning at Fenway Park, and now the Red Sox lead the Orioles seven to six. So the Orioles trying to come back. Yesterday, the Red Sox came back. We'll keep an eye on that, and of course, we'll update it right through the postgame with Bob Lorenz. 
3 2. Ground ball, base hit through the right side. So Guerrero picks up a leadoff single here in the ninth. Yankees baseball on Yes is brought to you in part by Kia Motors. Kia, the power to surprise. And by Continental Airlines, the official airline of the New York Yankees. And here's Juan Rivera. Rivera is two for four. Two ribbies. And that one flew out of the hand of Varis, just didn't get a good snap on the breaking ball. And one and oh. Five to one, the Angels lead, trying to take their second game out of what will be a four game set. Angels won on Friday, Yankees won on Saturday. And the Angels leading today, five to one. Grounded foul. Guerrero still uh, rubbing his hand where he got hit. And Mike Sosha can ill afford to lose him for any extended period. He's had a lot of injuries, he's had a battle. Most teams do. 1-1. One, one. And the count is 1-2. and two. He must be one of those players. Who they, a lot of players are like, they don't want the trainer to come out unless they call him out. And, uh, you know, oftentimes when that happens, the trainer just come out with that can of ethyl chloride and spray that on there to numb the area a little bit. I'm sure after the game he'll be putting some ice packs on it. Runner goes. The one-two is outside. Throw to second is in time. Posada has become almost automatic. His throwing is so, so strong this year. And the throwing comes from the footwork. Guerrero takes off. He looks in almost like he thinks it's a hit-and-run situation. And uh, Jorge's throw to Cano right on target. The footwork has improved so much. He moves those feet quickly, gets him in an excellent position to throw it uh, accurately and with plenty on it. It's a guy could do the same thing and probably offers Jorge a few tips along the way. I know Gary Tuck also uh, worked a lot with Jorge when he was here. Check out the footwork from uh, Jorge Posada. See the quick shift gets himself in position. Get his weight to the front leg. You know, he's become such a weapon, Jim. That Al Leiter was talking about that when he had Charles Johnson as the catcher in Miami. He said he would sometimes almost deke the runner into going, giving him a bigger lead. He said because he wanted him to try to steal against Johnson, it was like an out. Well, yeah, a lot of times if you if you have a catcher like that, you really don't have to pitch out. But if you can get that runner to take an extra step and then get it to home quickly, you know, on the outside part of the plate, Give your catcher a big advantage. 2-2. Two, two. Boy, these angel hitters, we, we said this on Friday, it's not as if they work the count, but they're cutting and slashing, and they keep the ball, you know, either foul, and uh, they'll continue to make the pitcher throw strikes. 15 hits today. They hit uh, double digits on, on Friday night. Fouled away. Posada this year has thrown out 27 of 78 would be base stealers. And that's a 351 caught stealing percentage. 
some of those stats though are somewhat skewed because there was a double steal earlier in the game so that's two steals against Prasad he had no chance those guys just took off and he had no chance but when he has a chance he has really been collecting and he gives a lot of credit to Tony Pena and Pena said really it's Posada two two three and two Finally puts one between the white lines and a fly ball to Abreu two away. Hey fans get a second chance to see the latest game with WB Mason presents Yankees Encore. It's only on yes. Tune in every night of the next morning at nine for the big hits and great plays of this game another time around. Don't miss WB Mason presents Yankees Encore only on yes. Here's Adam Kennedy one for three with a walk and he was caught stealing but that was more or less a pickoff Posada wasn't involved in that count one to know but some of that could be attributed to Posada because you're so desperate to get a good jump that the pitcher can catch you leaning. high fly ball left field Cabrera hardly has to move he'll put it away and that'll do it in the ninth. No runs to hit, no errors, and because of the caught stealing, nobody left on base. Bottom of the ninth inning coming up. Last licks for the Yankees. They try to make up a five to one deficit. Well, Vladimir Guerrero looks okay. He's gonna watch the bottom of the ninth inning from the bench. The Yankees trail five to one, and they do not bring in Francisco Rodriguez. Not a save situation. So they have Scott Shields tries trying to finish it off it'll be Jeter Abreu and Rodriguez Jeter is one for one with two walks and again that's a durability factor with Shields uh, if he can get through the ninth inning they save Rodriguez and, and he'll still be available to pitch tomorrow night. of course I think uh, any base runner you'll see Rodriguez up in a hurry and a one off Count one and one. One one pitch. Strike on the outside corner, one and two. What's interesting about this game of baseball, I was just thinking looking around the Angels in the field. I mean, how many of the Angel players would you take over the Yankee players if you rated them one? For, I mean, you got Abreu in right with Rivera. Juan's had a nice year, but I think you'd take Abreu. Figgins is uh, pesky in center, but Johnny Damon has been a better performer. Curtis Pride playing left today, and for a young player, uh, Melky Cabrera's coming on. You look around the infield with A-Rod, Jeter, Cano, but yet, uh, with the ability to put the ball in play, come up with some good relief pitching. Strike three, Jeter down looking. And he is not enamored with the call. You can read his lips, that's not a strike. Marvin's had uh, some disputes on that outside corner pitch. Let's see where this was. Now, it's not too low. And the late movement. Again, let's look at it from there. And I think when Derek looks at it again from the overhead view, I think the late movement sometimes fools the hitter, and that certainly looked like a good strike. Perfect pitcher's pitch. And yeah, Derek will say that quite often to umpires in the ninth inning on those disputed pitches when the other team has a lead. It's not over yet. Don't give me any help. Abreu's 0 for 3, and he has a 10 game hitting streak on the line here. Count one and one. Hey! 
Paints the outside corner, one and two. And Frankie Rodriguez just taking some to the mitt in case it becomes a safe situation. Two runners would have to get on for that to happen. As long as the tying run is on the on-deck circle, it's a safe situation. Or if you come into the ninth inning with a three-run lead. A-Rod's on deck, or if you pitch three innings of effective relief in any kind of game, you can get a save. The 2-2. Two -two. Check swing. Did he go? No, said the third base umpire, Mark Wagner. And the count is full of three and two. Yankees looking for base runners. Swing and a miss. He blew it by him upstairs. And Abreu's hitting streak is likely over unless the Yankees mount an unlikely comeback. Yeah, another good thing Scott Shields does. He pitches to the scoreboard. He's got a four-round lead. He struck Jeter out on a fastball. Abreu, he's, he's not going to mess around with a lot of breaking pitches. And that also keeps him fresh day after day because he doesn't throw as many pitches. He's in uh, one out away from pitching two complete innings. And less than 30 pitches a rod hits one deep to left field going back pride still back gone a solo home run by alex rodriguez as the yankees are still alive angels five yankees two a line drive just got over the wall Well, you have to be around the batting cage sometime to see when Alex does center one, how quickly the ball jumps off his bat. I mean, this was more of a line drive. Got out in a hurry. 25th home run for A-Rod. And he passes Gary Sheffield now in 30th place, all alone on the all-time list. Jambi fouls it away. The Yankee pitchers won't be eager to see this, but I've seen some of the. In fact, I think it was about a week ago. It had to be the hardest home run I've ever seen Fenway Park. Willie Mo Pena hit a line shot like Alex just did, but it had some carry to it, and it hit the monster seats. I think it bounced almost back to shortstop, and I, I read some comments about Terry Francona and some of the other people around the Red Sox. No one has seen the, anybody hit the ball harder than him. Deep drive, left center field, giving chase is Figgins. He's on the run, on the track. See ya! Back-to-back -back home runs for the Yankees. Jason Giambi goes yard, and the Angel lead is now 5-3. to three. Well, Scott Shields says, I'm not going to walk him. See if they can hit him out back-to-back, -back. and they did. And uh, that blast there is going to get Frankie Rodriguez in the game. Thirty fourth home run for Giambi. Ninety second ribby second hit of the afternoon and with those two home runs this now does become a save situation. Shields gives up the home runs to A-Rod and Giambi. It's time for Frankie Rodriguez. He'll try to end it. Posada is up next. Well, Jorge Posada will try to keep the Yankees alive. It's 5-3 now after a home run by A-Rod, a home run by Giambi. Two outs in the ninth, and then he turn it over to K-Rod, Francisco Rodriguez. And those numbers say it all when you look at hits per inning, strikeouts to walks, earned run average. He's lost a couple. I don't know how. Mike Sosha looks pretty comfortable. Well, if you believe in Dew, then Posada has to get a hit. He's 0 for 3 today. He's 0 for his last 24. Robinson Cano's on deck. 1 0. Does not have great numbers lifetime against Rodriguez. 1 for 8. Cano's 0 for 3 today. The 1 0. The 1 and 1. Many in the crowd of 54,309 have made their way onto the Major Deegan. 37th sellout of the year here at Yankee Stadium.
And the one one. Two and one. Popped up. This should do it. Shading his eyes is Curtis Pride. And he will put it away for the final out of the game. The Angels win this one 5-3 in the ninth inning. The Yankees two runs on two hits. A home run by A-Rod, a home run by Giambi. No errors and nobody left. And the Angels take their second game of this, what will be a four-game series, 5-4. to four. So Jared Weaver, the rookie, gets the win. He's 8-0. Francisco Rodriguez picks up the one-out save. And the Angels get to enjoy a Sunday evening in New York City, riding a 5-3 win. When we come back, we'll show you some of the highlights from this game, break it down as well. We'll be back to wrap it up. Angels beat the Yankees 5-3. Five Yankees three. Let's take a look at the Geico play the game called Geico and say 15% on your car insurance. Well, no surprise in seeing the play of the game involve Sean Figgins. Wow, he just tears out the Yankee pitching. Unusual for Chen Ming Wong to give up the long ball the first inning, but Figgins hit one, and that's our Geico play of the game. And after that home run, the Angels never trailed in this ball game. They win five to three, five fifteen and zero for Los Angeles. Three five and zero for the Yankees. Weaver goes to eight and zero. Long picks up his fifth loss. He's 13 and five. Rodriguez is 30th save. Time of the game 319. Figgins always hurts the Yankees. Three for four, a walk, a home run, two runs scored, and a stolen base. Wilson, Rodriguez, and Giambi accounted for the Yankee runs. Each one hit a home run. When we come back, we'll find out who the Chevy player of the game is. And of course, right after that, the postgame show with Bob and Kim. Stay where you are. Win 5-3, and the guy who got the victory, well, he's our Chevy player of the game. Well, I tell you, for the second time in three games, the Angels have sent a young rookie to the mound. Joe Saunders did it on Friday night, and Jared Weaver, motion like his brother, variety of fastballs, got his breaking ball over consistently when he was behind in the count, wins his eighth without a loss, and he's our Chevy player of the game. Coming up on the Yes Network, stay tuned for the Nissan New York Yankees postgame with Bob Lorenz and Kimberly Jones featuring complete game analysis and interviews. The senior producer of the Yes Network and today's game produced by Kevin Smolin, directed by Michael Cooney, studio produced by Bill Bolin and Drew Kaliski, supervising producer Woody Fryman, and the executive producer of the Yes Network is Mr. John Filippelli. Join us again tomorrow for Yankees baseball as the Bombers take on the Angels right here at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. Coverage begins at 6 p.m. with batting practice today followed by the New York Yankees pregame. For more on the Yes Network, please log on to yesnetwork.com. Once again, the final score, the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim 5 and the New York Yankees 3. We'll be back from the booth with some final thoughts in just a moment, but now let's go to Bob Lorenzo who is standing by patiently in our